All right, let's talk some more about solving linear equations. So this is section 2.3. And let me get this out of the way if I can. All right. Okay, um, let's suppose you have a fairly complicated looking linear equation, all right? So first thing you want to do is uh, simplify each side. That could involve clearing any parentheses, think the distributive property. It could mean clearing any fractions or decimals. It's always easier to solve an equation with no fractions, no decimals. It could mean combining like terms. Once you have each side uh, simplified, then you are going to get the variable on one side and the constant on the other, and then you're going to use the multiplication property by dividing whatever the coefficient is and check your answer. So let's do some examples. Let's suppose I have negative 5p plus 4 equals 19. So um, we don't have to simplify the left side. There's nothing we can do to combine these, no parentheses, no fractions, nothing we can do to simplify over here. Um, so we're going to deal with the constant first, so we're going to subtract 4. We get negative 5p is equal to 15. Negative 5, this is negative 5 times p, opposite of multiply is divide. And you get negative 3. All right. So this is an example where we have x's on both sides. Get them together first. Get the variables on the same side first. So we are going to, um, because this is negative, um, we are going to add 8x, add 8x. So we have 5 is equal to 10x minus 5. Um, now we are going to do our... So we're going to add 5 to both sides. And finally, we are going to divide by 10. Okay, I do want to point something out. Um, we can put the variable on either side. It doesn't matter. Um, usually we try for the variable to be positive, but that's not always possible. And there are often several equally correct ways to solve an equation. So just because I do something first doesn't make it the, um, the only way to solve a problem. I try to show you the fastest way and maybe the easiest way, but it doesn't make it the only way. All right, notice we have parentheses. So to start this problem, we will have to distribute. Be really careful. I do see students occasionally add the 11 and the three and get 14. That is not mathematically correct. You cannot do that. You have to first multiply um, before we can add the 11. Multiplication comes before addition. So we've got to multiply first, which means distribute. Um, and then we're going to add the 11. So 11 plus 3x. Don't forget to multiply the 3 times the 1. A lot of students just write 1. It's incorrect. So watch out for that. Now I'm going to combine the 11 and the 3. So I have 3x plus 14 is equal to 5x plus 16. Now I could either, so we want to get the x's together. Before the constant, we do the x's. So if I subtract 3x, notice my 5x is bigger, which will give us a positive x, which is always easier. It's not the only way. It's just a little bit easier. So 2x plus 16. Now we're going to deal with the constant. Opposite of add is subtract. So we have negative 2 is equal to 2x. 2 times x, opposite of multiply, is divide. And we get x is equal to negative 1. All right, now, this one students have trouble with as well. Um, this is um, 
really the same thing as having a little negative one out front. You do have to distribute that negative. So you're going to have 4x minus x. For some reason, students always forget to take that negative and multiply it times the 7 is equal to 9. We're going to combine our x's. And we're going to add 7. That is equal to 16. Divide by 3. Do not give me a decimal. No decimals. No decimals. No decimals. No decimals. And I don't want um, a mixed number either. So improper fraction reduced improper fraction. Okay. All right. So again, we have parentheses. This time I have two sets of parentheses. I have to distribute the negative three and I have to distribute the four. So two, I'm going to distribute the three, distribute the three, distribute the four. Don't forget to multiply the four times one. Combine like terms on the left. Combine like terms on the right. So we have negative 4 minus 18z. And this is going to give me a negative 4. So we want the z's on the same side. So if I add 18z, that will give us a positive z, which it makes life a little bit easier. 22z minus 4. Now we're going to do our constant. So we're going to add 4. And um, divide by 22. Be careful on this one. 0 divided by 22 is 0, which is a perfectly acceptable answer. Just because the answer is 0 does not make it incorrect. Okay, so there are some uh, equations that don't really have an answer, and then there are some equations that um, every number out there is actually a solution. So let's um, see what that's going to look like. So I'm going to combine my x's, so 2x plus 10, combine my constant, 2x plus 10. I am going to get my x's on the same side, so subtract 2x. Now notice, if I have 2 and I subtract 2, that gives me a 0. I have no more x's on the left-hand side. In the same way, if I have 2x's and I subtract 2x's, I have 0x's. I, it's not 1x. It's not x. It's 0. 0x's. Zero All the x's are gone. They've canceled out. So right now I have 10 is equal to 10. When you have the situation where all of your x's completely cancel out, there's no x's left, it's not a situation like before where we had z equals 0. That's not what I'm talking about. This would be if the z itself is completely gone. Okay, So if there is no more variable, no variable at all whatsoever, the answer is going to be one of two choices. It's either going to be no solution or it's going to be infinitely many solutions. And how do we know which is which? Okay, so to figure out which is which, you check the number that we're left with and to see if it's equal, the left side is equal to the right. If it is equal, then we would say it has infinitely infinitely many solutions, okay? What that means is I could literally plug in my favorite number right here for x, and I would get a true statement. You plug in your favorite number, you would get a true statement for x. Your best friend Joe plugs in his favorite number, you would get a true statement. So any number at all that we plug in here is going to work in this equation. Um, by the way, 
um, do not tell me 10 is equal to 10. That's not going to, um, that's not going to do it. Um, there is a, another way of writing infinitely many solutions. Um, no, do not write the infinity symbol. Um, what you could do is say all real numbers. Okay, that would be um, equally correct. Um, you could use the, this is the math symbol for the real number system. So if you do this, make sure you draw not just an R, but it has to have like that double line there. Um, so this is equivalent to this. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of other ways. Um, sometimes you could see it as negative infinity to positive infinity. There's lots of different ways you can say the same thing, but do not write just the infinity symbol. Okay, that's not going to work. All right, we are going to distribute the 6. 3x plus 8 is equal to 6x minus 6 minus 3x. We are going to combine like terms. So 3x plus 8 is equal to 3x minus 6. Get the x's on the same side. So we have 8 is equal to negative 6. Again, our variables canceled out, and all we're left is constants, which are not equal to each other. When they are not equal to each other, we would say there is no solution. Um, another way you can say that um, is um, using this symbol right here. It is not called a zero with a line through it. It's called empty set. T Y empty set, meaning literally the set of answers has nothing in it. Okay, so the set the set is empty. Um, another way of saying the empty set is to do braces in my Braces don't look very good right there. Um, these are called braces, and don't put anything in there. Don't put an empty set symbol inside the braces. So this is also called the empty set. It is just different notation for the exact same thing. So all three of these could be um, potential ways of writing um, the answer. All right, let's suppose we have fractions, everybody's favorite, okay? Now, you could solve this with fractions. I don't recommend it. I, instead, I recommend eliminating the fractions. This is really, really important. Pay attention. You're going to want to know how to do this. What we're going to do is we are going to take all of our denominators right here, <clears throat> 3, 12, 4, and 2, and we are going to find the what's called the least common multiple, least common multiple. In other words, it's the smallest number smallest number that all of these numbers go into, not go into them, but they themselves go into. So the, the smallest it can possibly be is 12, all right? Don't think one, don't think two. That's not what we're looking for. That would be a uh, greatest common um, factor. That's not what we're looking for. We want least common multiple. So the smallest number, that 3 goes into, that 12 goes into, that 4 goes into, that 2 goes into. In fact, it is actually 12. All right. So another thing that this might be called is least common denominator, although I choose not to call it a denominator because we're not actually going to create a common denominator. So here's what we're going to do with this 12. We are going to take 12 and we're going to multiply both sides by 12. So I'm going to multiply the left side by 12. And I'm going to multiply the right side by 12. Like that. I'm going to distribute the 12. I'm going to wait to actually multiply these um, for just 
um, one more step here. Okay, so if you recall from a previous video, I talked about how to multiply a whole number times a fraction. When you multiply a whole, whole number times a fraction, you divide by the bottom and multiply the top. Divide by the bottom, multiply the top. Divide by the bottom, multiply the top. Divide by the bottom, multiply the top. Notice what I did here, okay? I turned a problem that is pretty complicated to do into a very straightforward problem without any fractions. This right here is one of the most valuable things you can learn for solving linear equations. So I am going to um, get my x's on the same side, get my constant on the same side, Um, divide by 2, and I end up with negative 7. Okay? Similar sort of thing, guys, only this time you got to be careful um, because we have this term right here, we've got this term right here, and I've got this term. Don't forget about the negative 2. Just because it's not currently a fraction doesn't mean we don't have to worry about it. So we've got 4, 3, and 1 least common denominator, or at least common multiple, I should say, least common multiple is again going to be 12. Um, that is a coincidence. There's, It's not always going to be 12, but in this case, because we have a 4 and a 3, smallest number that they both go into is 12. So I'm going to multiply. Now, with the previous example, I multiplied both sides and then I distributed. Okay, I'm going to save myself some time by skipping this step and going directly to this step where I'm just going to actually distribute rather than worrying about multiplying both sides. So I'm just going to distribute that 12. If you want to write it more times, feel free, um, but this is um, faster. So again, you're going to divide by the bottom, multiply the top. Do not distribute yet. Do not distribute yet. Do not distribute yet. Wait to distribute until after you get rid of those fractions. The problem with um, distributing at the same time is that you tend to mess up um, getting the, the second number here. You, you just tend to mess it up. You're more likely to make an error if you, drop, if you try to do too many things at once. So once I've eliminated the fractions, now I'm going to distribute 3x plus 9 minus 8x minus 8. Once again, don't forget to distribute. you got to multiply that second number there. Combine like terms. Get my constant on the other side. And negative 5 times x, the opposite of multiply, is divide. All right. Okay, so similar sort of thing. Um, students are more comfortable with decimals just because they've grown up with calculators, but you can do a similar sort of thing with decimals. So notice I have one decimal place, one decimal place, one decimal place. To move... Um, a decimal one place to the right, I would multiply by 10. So I can multiply each term by 10, by 10, and by 10. And what that will give me is 5. Again, wait to distribute. Multiply. It's going to move one decimal place to the right. One decimal to, place to the right. Got my parentheses. There you go. And um, once we've eliminated the decimal, then we are going to distribute. Don't 
Don't forget to multiply your negative 1 times your 7. I'm going to get my x's on the same side. I'm not going to do that yet. Sorry, I'm going to combine my 45 and my 7. What do we got? 38. Now I'm going to get my x's on the same side. Uh, 38 plus 14x. Um, take my 38 to the other side. And that should not be an x. And I get negative 2. All right. Okay, um, translating a phrase into an algebraic expression. So we have two numbers and they have a product of um, 36. Product, remember product means multiply. Um, if we say quotient, that's division. The word sum, S-U-M, means addition, adding. And um, difference, the word difference means subtract. Okay, so two numbers have a product of 36. We're going to call one of them X. And I'm going to multiply by something else, and I get 36. My question is, what am I going to use for, for this other number? In other words, I want to get this question mark by itself on one side. So my other number would be represented by 36 over x. So one number, we're gonna use x, and the other number, we would call that um, 36 divided by x. All right.